revolution. May I tell you something now things are get red in a London, right here in a Brixton. We have the squatters, a fight for the squatters' rights and the squatters' union, which is more like a family, you see me? The tribe fighting for a mission. Yes, Thunder. My friend Major Thunder there, introducing me. I'm going to introduce myself a bit further in the situation. The homelessness, squatting, people in England denied their rights who were born in England, such as myself. Hello, London. Hello, world. You're here on the radio. Now you can put a face to the voice. As you know, because I've been on BBC Radio London 94.9 for the last six weeks, you can go and listen again any time from the shows from 2 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock. You'll hear me on Caroline Faraday last night, quarter to three, bringing the angle of a story that hasn't been told. The squatters. How much money has this government saved every year? millions and millions of pounds that they saved because they do not give them no flats and they do not give them any rent money so therefore if you count how much money from the days squatting started in this country great britain apart from scotland where it's illegal they saved i say trillions and trillions of pounds give the squatters a medal join the squatters government councils Give them money to fix up the places. Give them builders to build up where they need to build up. And let them have some affordable homes because times are getting serious. And the government, being honest with you, don't seem to care about anybody but themselves. Yes, Tanda, you wanted to ask me some questions? Well, Greeky, my first question is how long have you actually been homeless? I've been homeless now and on the streets and on, well, I didn't even know it had a term, the council called sulfur surfing. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna go to some beach and start on the sofa surfing on the sea waves. But apparently it's what I've been doing, going from friends to friends house, sleeping on sofas, sometimes on floors, sometimes in chairs. Then uh, about six weeks ago, I ended up being completely on the streets, had a little, uh, I had a girlfriend you know, stayed there on and off for a few months. And then six, like, well, six weeks ago, I literally, on the streets of London, I ended up down next to St. Thomas Hospital. Okay, I understand that, I understand. London, 94.9, more than what I'm telling you now even, of that part I'm telling you. Mm. How much money has the government saved? For the years and years, we've had hundreds of thousands of millions and millions of squatters. Yeah. Years. How much money have they saved by not housing people and they didn't claim rents? Mm. The squatters yeah. deserve a medal, my friend, I told them mm. last night from the government. Mm. And I've been kicking in for an initiative for the government to meet with key squatters mm. and also the councils to give them money or give them the building materials and the builders. Yeah. Fix up these places you close. Yeah. Do you know what this place used to be? No, I've been here for years. I know. I'm you there. know what it is, though. It's part of that Morsley Hospital. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a little thing in there. You can take a picture of it. It says Morsley Hospital. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Toilets, right? Mm. And I scandalised them already. Yeah. The BBC News just took already the, the dress today, just in case. I thought I'm locking myself up in there. Mm. Told everybody, pack up your things. Who wants to stand up in there with me? Because we're a family. Mm. Get, I need you out there free. I don't want you all arrested. Mm. But I've told the BBC, that's it. My back's killing me. Mm. My legs going numb. Mm. No conditions. Suffering from depression. Um, depression. Suffering from anxiety. No one's in this. The medical services came and found me in my bed like this. My mom was, when my mom sat at the house before the house sold six months where I lived on the streets. My toenails wrapped up. Medical services are a private company. My GP went and found out. No one else could. Ask the BBC, they wouldn't even find out because they don't want to sue them. No one sued them before. Job center people said, Greek, you try and do it, man. You're the man who can do it. And you got the condition, man. You got a ligament, two, three vertebrae missing. Mm -hmm. Your neck's going, <laughs> your neck's got spondylitis in the neck. It's all down. Am I right now? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm really pissed off. Um, and they don't have nothing to help you. No, no. What, what, they, what they done? They've left them on the streets, bruv. And 
what happened? The medical dead. services came three years ago. Dead, yeah, three, that's, yeah, that's, that's three, the easiest way to deal with him. The easiest way to help him. The medical services came and yeah. saw me on behalf of the DWP, uh, Pet Widows Pension, the Department of uh, Work and Pensions, yes. mm -hmm. Clapham Common, mm -hmm. Maya Love, Disability Advisor. Name shame. Say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Wait there, one second. And you just take an interview after? Yeah. Oh, Three years ago, I went up into the job centre, Clapham Common. And I, I, I gave her a letter, Maya Love. I said, so there's a letter from my doctor saying I cannot work anymore as a chef. I trained as a chef, patissier, butchery, charcuterie, with Rue Brothers. They knew that. She saw me deteriorated through the time. She gets a letter from the doctor saying, this man cannot work. She's the disability works advisor. Instead of telling them people at the top, this man cannot work, here's his doctor's letters. She tried to put me to work because for 25 letters, the medical services in Croydon, which is a private company, by the way, they decided to keep...